live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is theCUBE live in New York City for CUBE NYC, hashtag CUBE NYC. This is our ninth year covering the big data ecosystem, which is now merged into cloud, all things kind of coming together. It's really about AI, it's about developers, about operators, about data scientists. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Brent Compton, Technical Marketing Director for Storage Business at Red Hat. Uh, as you know, we cover Red Hat Summit and uh, great to have the conversation. Open source, DevOps is the theme here. Brent, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure, thank you. So we've been talking about the role of AI and AI needs data and data, data needs storage, when you do. Uh, if you look at, but if you look at what's going on in the marketplace, kind of an architectural shift. I mean, it's harder to find a cloud architect than it is find diamonds these days. You know, it's like you can't find a good cloud architect. Uh, cloud is driving a lot of the action data is, is a big part of that. What's, your, what's Red Hat doing in this area and, and, and what's emerging for you guys in this data landscape? Yeah, really the days of specialists are, are over. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned it's more difficult to find a cloud architect than find diamonds. What we see is the infrastructure, it's become less about uh, compute and storage and networking. It's the architect that can bring the confluence of those specialties together. One of the things that we see is people bringing their analytics workloads uh, onto the same, uh, onto the common platforms where they've been running the rest of their uh, enterprise applications. Uh, so if, for instance, if they have, um, if they're running a lot of their enterprise applications on AWS, of course they want to run their analytics workloads on AWS and that's, you know, EMR is long since in the history books. Likewise, if they're running a lot of their enterprise applications on OpenStack, it's natural that they want to run a lot of their analytics workloads on the same type of dynamically provisioned infrastructure. And emerging, of course, we just announced on Monday this week with, with Hortonworks and IBM, if they're running a lot of their uh, enterprise applications on a Kubernetes uh, substrate like OpenShift, uh, they want to run their analytics workloads on that same kind of agile infrastructure. Talk about the private cloud impact and hybrid cloud, because obviously we just talked to the CEO of Hortonworks. You know, and normally it's about you know, early days about Hadoop, you know, data lakes and then data planes. They had a good vision, they, they're years into it, but so I, I like what the Hortonworks is doing, but he said Kubernetes, I mean, data show, Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a, is a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud concept containers. This is really enabling a lot of value and you guys have OpenShift, which became very successful over the past few years. Uh, the growth has been phenomenal, so congratulations. But it's pointing to a bigger trend and that is that the infrastructure software, the platform as a service is becoming the middleware the glue, if you will, and Kubernetes and containers are facilitating kinds of a new architecture for developers and operators. How important is that for you, with you guys? And how, what's the impact of the customer when they think, okay, I'm going to have an agile DevOps environment at workload portability, but do I have to build that out? You mentioned people don't have to necessarily do that anymore. The trend is to become on-premise. What's the impact of the customers as they, as they hear Kubernetes and containers and the data conversation. So you mentioned agile DevOps environment, workload portability, so one of the things that customers come to us for is having that same thing, but infrastructure agnostic. They say, I, I don't want to be locked in, love AWS, love Azure, but I don't want to be locked into those uh, platforms. I want to run, I want to have an abstraction layer for my Kubernetes layer um, that sits on top of uh, those infrastructure platforms. So that, and as I bring my workloads one by one, you know, custom DevOps from you know, a lift and shift of legacy apps onto uh, that substrate, I want to have it be uh, um, independent. So private cloud uh, or public cloud. Uh, and if, if time permitting, we'll go into more details about what we've seen happening in the private cloud with analytics as well, which is effectively what brought us here today is we, we, the pattern that we discovered with a lot of our large customers who are saying, hey, we want to bring, we're running OpenStack, they're large institutions that for lots of reasons, they store a lot of their data on, uh, on premises, uh, saying we want to use the utility compute model that OpenStack gives us, uh, as well as the common, you know, the, the shared data context that Ceph gives us, we want to use that same thing for our, our analytics workload. So effectively, some of our large customers taught us 
uh, this. Uh, so they're building uh, analytical product. infrastructure, anal infrastructure for analytics, essentially. That's what it is. So one of the challenges analytics. with that is the data is everywhere. It's all in silos. It's sort of locked maybe in some server somewhere. How, uh, first of all, am I overstating that problem, and how are you seeing customers deal with that? What are some of the challenges that they're having, and how are you guys helping? Uh, perfect lead in one of the, uh, in fact, one of our large government customers, um, they recently sent us an unsolicited email after they had deployed their, their the first 10 petabytes in a decapetabyte uh, solution. It's OpenStack based uh, as well as um, uh, um, Ceph based. Um, they had three taglines in their email. The first was releasing the lock on data. The second was releasing the lock on compute. And the third was releasing the lock on innovation. Now that, that sounds that sounds a bit buzzwordy, but when it comes from a customer, that came from a customer. To you, right? Sounds like a marketing department uh, wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in the details, um, as you know, traditional um, HDFS clusters, uh, that traditional Hadoop clusters, Spark clusters, whatever, HDFS is not shared between clusters. Right. One of our large customers uh, um, has 50 plus analytic clusters. So their data platforms team, you know, employ a maze of scripts to copy data from one cluster to the other. Wow. And if you're a scientist or an engineer, you say, you know, I'm trying to obtain these types of answers, but I need access to data sets A, B, C, and D, but a, uh, data sets A and B are only on this cluster. I've got to go contact the data platforms team to have them copied over and ensure that it's up to date and in sync. So it's just, Nightmare. It's messy. It's a nightmare. Messy. So that's why the one customer said unlocking the, uh, you know, uh, uh, releasing the lock on data because now it's in a, it's in a shared, so similar paradigm as AWS with EMR. So uh, the data's in a shared context in S3. You, you spin up your, your analytics workloads on EC2, same paradigm with, well, open, that this customer has with OpenStack. You're spinning up your, your analytics workloads uh, via OpenStack virtualization and they're sourcing a shared uh, uh, data context uh, inside of Ceph, S3 compatible Ceph. So same architecture, and I, I love his last bit, the one that sounds most buzzwordy, which was releasing lock on innovation. His words were, and this individual English was not this person's first language, uh, so love the words said, um, our developers no longer fear uh, um, experimentation. Because it's so easy, in minutes they can spin up an analytics cluster uh, um, with a shared data context uh, they, they get the wrong mix of things, they, they, they shut it down and spin it up again. And the previous example you used with the HDFS clusters, it's so many trip wires, right? You can break something. So it's fragile scripts. It's like I mean, scripts. So, you, know, you don't want to tinker with that. You, know, you don't want to get, get their yeah. hands yeah, The other slapped. thing is also the recognition that, that innovation comes from data, right? That's, the, 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 that's what I, my takeaway is, the customer saying, okay, now we can innovate because we have access to the data, we can apply intelligence to that data, whether it's machine intelligence or analytics, et cetera. So this is the trend in infrastructure. You mentioned the shared concept. What other observations and learnings have you guys come to as Red Hat starts to get more customer interactions around analytical infrastructure? Is it an IT problem? You mentioned abstracting away uh, different infrastructures. That means multi is probably set up for you guys in a big way. Um, but what does that mean for a customer? If you had to explain infrastructure analytics, what, what needs to get done? What does a customer need to do? How do you, how do you um, describe that? I love the term that industry uses of multi-tenant workload isolation with shared data context. Uh, that, that's such a, a concise term to describe what, I, what we talk to our customers about. And most of them, that's what they're looking for. They've got their data scientist teams that don't want their workloads mixed in with the long running batch workloads that say, listen, I've got, I've got, I'm on deadline here. I've got an hour to get these answers. And they're working with Impal, they're working with Presto, they need rapid, they, they iterate. They don't know exactly the pattern they're looking for, so having, uh, having to take a long time because their jobs are mixed in with these long, you know, map reduced jobs. They need to be able to spin up infrastructure, uh, um, you know, uh, workload isolation, meaning they have their own space, shared context, they don't want to be placing calls over, over to the, the platform team and say, hey, can, you know, I need data sets C, D, and E, could you please you know, send them over? I got, you know, I'm, I'm on deadline here. So that, that, that phrase, I think, captures so nicely what, for what customers are really looking to do with their, their analytics infrastructure. It, it, so analytics tools, they'll still do their thing, but yeah. the infrastructure underneath analytics, uh, delivering this new type of agility, is giving that multi-tenant workload isolation 
with shared data context. You know what's funny is we were talking at the, the, kick, the kickoff, we were looking back nine years, we've been at this sort of event for nine years now, and we made the prediction there will be no red hat of big data, and John, years ago, said, unless it's red hat. And you guys kind of got dragged into this by your customers, really, is how it came about. Customers and partners, uh, of course, you're, you're uh, with the, your recent guest from uh, Hortonworks, the, uh, the announcement that Red Hat, Hortonworks, and IBM had on Monday this week, and just dialing it up even further with you, know, taking the agility, okay, OpenStack is great for agility, you know, private cloud, uh, um, utility-based computing and storage with OpenStack and Ceph, great. But, but OpenShift takes and dials up that agility another notch, and that's, uh, uh, of course, we heard uh, from the, uh, the CEO of, of Hortonworks, you know, how much they love the agility that a Kubernetes-based uh, uh, substrate provides um, their analytics uh, customers. So that's essentially how you're creating that sort of same, same experience between on-prem and multi-cloud, is that yeah. right? Uh, OpenShift is, is deployed pervasively on AWS, on-premises, yeah. uh, on Azure, yep. on GCE. It's a multi-cloud world, we see that for sure. And again, the validation was at VMworld that AWS's CEO, Andy Jassy, announced RDS, which is their, their product, on VMware on-premises, which they've never done. Amazon's never done any product on-premises. We expect that it would be a hardware device, but you know, we missed that one, but it's software. But this is the validation. Seamless cloud operations on-premise in the cloud really is the, what do people want? They want one standard operating model and they want to abstract away the infrastructure, as you were saying, as the big trend. The question that we have is, okay, go to the next level. From a developer standpoint, what is this modern developer using for tools and the infrastructure? How can they get that agility and spinning up you know, isolated multi-tenant infrastructure kind of concepts all the time? This is kind of the demand we're seeing. So you know, that, that's an evolution. The question for Red Hat is, how does that change your partnership strategy? Because you mentioned Rob Bearden on, you know, he, they've been hardcore enterprise, and you guys are hardcore enterprise. You kind of know the little things that customers want that might not be on obvious to people, compliance, certification, uh, decade of support. Security. How is Red Hat's partnership model changing with, with this changing landscape, if you will? Uh, you mentioned IBM and Hortonworks released this week, but what in general, how's the partnership strategy look for you? The more it changes, the more it, it uh, looks the same. When, when you go back like 20 years ago, what Red Hat has always stand, stood for is uh, any application uh, on any infrastructure. I, I mean, but back in the day it was, uh, you know, we had you know, 10,000 of applications that were certified on, on Red Hat Linux. Yeah, and on we a, ran on a, a anybody's <laughs> just, uh, a server, exactly, <laughs> running on a box, exactly. So very similar, I mean, it's, it's a similar play just in 2018 in the, in the world of, of hybrid multi-cloud architectures. Well, you guys have done some serious heavy lifting. I mean, don't hate me for saying this, but you're kind of like the mules of the industry. I mean, you do a lot of stuff <laughs> that nobody either wants to do or knows how to do, and it's, it's really paid off. I mean, you just look at the ascendancy of the company, it's been amazing. Well, multi-cloud is hard. I mean, look at what, how, what it takes to do multi-cloud in DevOps, it's not easy and so a lot of pretenders will fall out of the way. You guys have done well. So what's, what's next for you guys? What's on the horizon? What's happening uh, for you guys uh, this next uh, couple months for Red Hat and, 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 and technology? Any new announcements coming? What's the vision? What's happening? One of the announcements that you saw last week uh, was uh, Red Hat at Cloudera and Eurotech. Uh, as you know, analytics in the data center is great. Uh, it, you know, the world Increasingly, the world's businesses run on uh, on decisions, you know, data-driven decisions. That's great, but analytics at the edge for more real-time, you know, industrial automation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, per the announcements we did with Cloudera and Eurotech uh, about the use of uh, of, uh, we haven't even talked about the uh, um, you know Red Hat's middleware platforms. Um, uh, such as AMQ Streams, mm -hmm. it now based on Kafka, a Kafka distribution, um, Fuse, it fuse you know, it, you know, it, it, an integration master. So effectively, uh, um, bringing Red Hat uh, um, technology to an the, the edge of analytics so that, uh, um, so that you have the ability to do some processing in real time before back calling all the way back to the data center. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's an area that yeah. you'll also see is, is 
pushing some analytics to the edge through our partnerships, such as announced with Cloudera and Eurotech. You guys got the Red Hat Summit coming up next year. So we'll be, the Cube will be there as, as usual. It's great to cover Red Hat. Thanks for coming on the Cube, Brent. Appreciate it. Thanks for spending the time. Thank you. We're here in Thank New York you. City Live. I'm John Furrier, David Lyther. Stay with us all day coverage today and tomorrow in New York City. We'll be right back. Stop.